Hi, I'm Bridget Dorsey, and for Social Control and Deviance, we read No Place to Hide by Glenn Greenwald, which is a really interesting takedown um, and explanation and journalistic inquiry into the NSA's security state. The book is pretty much billed for the American public to easily consume all the documents that were leaked through Glenn Greenwald's actions and sort of wrap it up into an easily understandable idea of how the NSA is run and how it impacts our daily lives. So the book starts with Glenn Greenwald pretty much establishing his journalistic credibility. Um, he's somebody who's really politically minded and he's spent his career trying to expose government corruption and he extensively covered WikiLeaks. So he was a journalist that um, Edward Snowden was specifically interested in uh, because Edward Snowden needed a media filter to publish his work. He wasn't going to come out um, on his own. He pretty much handpicked Glenn Greenwald and Laura Poitras, who was a really accredited filmmaker. She did a lot of stuff with... Um, the wars in the Middle East and showing the uh, lack of accountability that the military had over there. Um, Glenn and Laura pretty much have the position that um, journalism serves to require transparency of institutions and major journalistic outlets in these days are increasingly paid off by the government in, and in cahoots with the authority that they're supposed to be checking, um, but Glenn and Laura sort of raise the totem towards journalistic integrity and um, revealing things that would be concealed from the public. So the since Glenn Greenwald's a journalist, the novel reads pretty journalistically. It's not like it's not structured like in chronological order or like a novel it doesn't build on each other it's pretty much like sectioned into events so the, the way the first chapter starts out it, hook, it hooks you right away by dropping the name Edward Snowden right away Glenn's been contacted by Edward Snowden who's going under this alias Cincinnatus um, and he's trying to persuade Glenn Greenwald to begin encrypting his communications so he can't be eavesdropped on um, so already the tension's really high in the novel, and they start, um, discussing, um, possible scandals and leaks that are about to come out, and Glenn Greenwald sort of makes the decision to be in on this story. Um, he has faith in, um, this anonymous communicator's sincerity in wanting to expose secrets and uh, Glenn goes for it. So there's a lot of things that come out in the first chapter. Um, they start hinting at the extensive surveillance that the government has over us. Um, they they choose to speak in encryption and they also um, take the batteries out of their laptops and their cell phones so they can't be eavesdropped on. Um, the situation's really delicate at this point and it promises, it's very explosive. Um, and so they're just collecting information at this point in the story. Glenn and Laura make the decision to go in on this, um, go in on this whistleblower, uh, with him and they decide to fly to Hong Kong to speak with him and um, the chapter ends with them setting their hands on the first documents that are eventually going to be the sustenance of the leak and of the force, first stories that they release. So in the first chapter, Glenn Greenwald also reads Edward Snowden's manifesto towards why he's leaking all this information. Um, and it's basically just that he feels that, um, it's his moral duty to expose to the American public the deception that their government has imposed on them. Um, the thesis of the novel is that secrecy enables abuses of power and that our government has been endowed with all this power, but yet not required to check that 
power through transparency or accountability or communication with the public. Um, it's just allowed to expand and um, mutate into something very encompassing and controlling. Um, it develops later on in the book. Pretty much the fourth chapter is when Glenn Greenwald really gets uh, philosophically into why the government feels that they need to maintain. It's not why they need to maintain the control, but how they maintain the control is just collecting, just creating um, a barrier that catches absolutely every information, every piece of communication, all information transmitted domestically and abroad um, can be captured and examined by the U.S. government. And if there's totality of knowledge and if there's an absence of privacy, then total power can be maintained. And Glenn is trying to expose that as a conspiracy and an injustice and a violation of our fundamental rights. Um, so after chapter one, chapter two is very action-packed. Chapter two covers pretty much meeting with Glenn, um, the meeting between Glenn and um, Snowden. He's hiding out in a hotel in Hong Kong. He's preparing for the big release. Um, in their conversations in these chapters, a lot um, of these NSA secrets are revealed. Um, so we understand Snowden's background. Uh, he's a high school dropout. He's a little bit of an opportunist. He's jumped around different tech jobs. He's a specialist. He had a government career in the NSA and he saw a lot of horrors, like he saw drone strikes and he saw torture and he saw a lot of questionable things that weren't answered to and he started developing this idea that he needed to um, release this information. Um, Snowden's personal thesis is that the meaning of life and the measurement of one's individual worth is to what extent they act in defense of their own, own principles. So to Snowden, um, his principles are towards the spread of, of knowledge and holding institutions accountable for their actions. So this act of leaking all his documents, this is what he wanted to do with his life. Um, it's his obligation, he feels, and Greenwald supports that in his novel. Um, Snowden has a really strong like moral compass, he has a strong political consciousness, and he has a strong feeling that the world is not going the way it should be. And American citizens and people around the world need to know what's being done with their information and need to be outraged about their lack of privacy. So uh, the second chapter also shows them taking the stories to press and the different bureaucratic hurdles that they have to go through to get it published. Um, Greenwald talks a lot in his book, especially in chapters four and five. Five is the main one where he does it, but um, the failures of today's media's institutions um, to communicate on behalf of the, pub of the public because of their cooperation with the government and other organizations that want to keep Americans in the dark. Um, but the stories finally are reported to a lot of turmoil. Um, and Snowden is tracked down. He's uh, in exile. Uh, come chapter three, um, well, come chapter four, I guess. Come chapter four, they're trying to decide whether uh, Glenn Greenwald should be persecuted personally for his role in letting these stories come to light. Um, in chapter three, they examine pretty much all the documents. Um, Glenn does a good job of uh, breaking down and distributing information for the viewer, um, for the reader to understand the different documents. Um, there's a lot about the global cooperation that different governments have had. Uh, the NSA has contracted out um, their systems of surveillance to other countries that are interested in the same thing. Uh, they have economic espionage pursuits, and um, they tap political leaders. Um, they have carefully ranked... Um, like ally lists. It, it, chapter 3 pretty much just reveals a lot of problematic documents to alarm the reader. And then in chapter um, 4, Glenn Greenwald talks about the human right to privacy and um, philosophically why we should be outraged about um, 
NSA surveillance and uh, the psychological effects, the social effects of surveillance on people, how that changes their behavior. In five, in the last chapter, he sort of wraps up things by um, talking about the media and uh, talking about how he was personally dug into and discredited following the leak <coughs> and the war that he had on his hands because of that. Um, and he wraps up uh, just sort of talking about um, what should be done in the future. And uh, I think the book was really good. No Place to Hide, like... Um, really does a good job of educating Americans about what they need to know about um, the NSA leaks. Really opened my eyes, broke down a lot of information in a really digestible way. It wasn't too complex. Um, I didn't really like the organization of the book. Didn't really make sense to me. Again, I thought it was just very journalistic rather than... Um, I thought a lot of the suspense and stuff was kitschy. Like, I wanted a little bit more, like, investigative stuff rather than uh, just Glenn Greenwald's manifesto in cahoots with uh, with Snowden. Um, but I think it was good. I think it, it, it's a very well-developed novel. It's sort of very... Um, it's one of the essential texts you should, should read to understand the issue. So the book definitely provoked me to anger about the government surveillance that is happening to our society and definitely gave me a lot of messages to pass on to people that blindly support um, our government.